Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. Let's take a look at the headlines. Trudeau cabinet shuffle, Harjit Sajjan replaced by Anita Anand as defense minister. Kitchener teacher under investigation after using inappropriate disciplinary methods. A military coup in Sudan results in civil unrest. IRCC apologizes for leaking the names and faces of hundreds of at-risk Afghans. Developed nations have not kept their $100 billion promise to developing countries in the fight against climate change. Claudette Colvin is fighting to clear her record decades after refusing to sit at the back of a segregated bus. Ontario continues to receive ICU patients from Saskatchewan. The UK is preparing to welcome thousands from Hong Kong. To begin, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is starting his third term in office with a major overhaul of his cabinet, removing several long-term ministers and shuffling almost all of his government's senior positions. In one of the biggest changes, longtime Defence Minister Harjit Sajjan is being removed from the defence portfolio and replaced by Procurement Minister Anita Anand. There are some cabinet ministers staying in their positions. As previously announced, Christia Freeland remains the Minister of Finance and Deputy Prime Minister. Omar al Gabra will stay at Transport. Marie-Claude Bibo will stay on as Minister of Agriculture. David Lemedi remains Justice Minister and Attorney General. Diana Leboutillier stays as Minister of National Revenue. Carla Qualtro will stay in charge of Employment Workforce Development. And Lawrence McCauley stays on as Minister of Veteran Affairs. In other Canadian news, one elementary school teacher in Kitchener has become the central figure in a criminal investigation. It is alleged that the teacher chose to punish a student for moving a desk during class by duct taping his hands. CBC spoke with the child's father who found out about the incident through the school's principal because the child was too scared to talk about what had happened. In Sudan, the military has officially taken control after arresting the Prime Minister on Monday. The military coup has threatened the nation's progress towards democracy just two weeks before the military was supposed to hand power to the citizens. As a result, thousands of protesters took to the streets. While setting fires to tires, protesters could be heard chanting that the people were stronger and that retreat was out of the question. In response, security personnel took fire at the crowd, killing three people and injuring 80 others. The United Nations, European Union and the United States have all condemned the coup. In other recent news, several hundred at-risk Afghans recently had their names leaked because of an error made by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. This careless move puts these individuals at risk, some of whom have been hiding because of their previous roles in government, armed forces, justice system and are working for human rights. One email featured the names of 200 people. Some included pictures of their faces. Although the IRCC has not apologized publicly, they have sent private apologies to those who were affected. In global news, a joint report drafted by Canada and Germany ahead of the COP15 has found that the richer nations have failed to uphold their commitment to provide $100 billion a year to poorer countries in their fight against climate change. This commitment was made in 2009 and it was reaffirmed in 2015. Its main aim was to help developing countries who were disproportionately suffering from the emissions caused by the developed world. The promised money was also a key reason that underprivileged countries agreed to the emission reduction targets at the Paris Climate Summit six years ago. According to the report, in order to avoid the disastrous effects of climate change and to maintain trust amongst nations, it is imperative that the developed world meets these targets. Turning now to the United States. Months prior to the infamous moment when Rosa Parks refused to move to the back of an Alabama bus, which in turn ignited a year-long Montgomery bus boycott, a young teenager was arrested for doing the same. Specifically, Claudette Colvin, a 15-year-old at the time, and her friend upset a bus driver because she was sitting near two white girls. The bus driver called the police, who eventually removed Claudette from the bus as she kicked and scratched the officer. Although she was initially convicted for breaking the city's segregation law, for disorderly conduct and assaulting an officer, she was officially only charged for assaulting the officer. Now at the age of 82, Claudette is fighting to have her record wiped once and for all. In Saskatchewan, ICU patients stable enough to travel are continuing to be funneled into Ontario's healthcare system. The province is expected to receive military assistance soon as it is on the brink of a healthcare collapse as cases of COVID-19 continue to overwhelm their ICUs. By Wednesday, it is expected that 19 ICU patients will be moved to Ontario. In more global news, UK has opened up a new visa which gives residents of Hong Kong passage to the UK and ultimately citizenship. 
In the first half of this year, 65,000 people from Hong Kong have applied for this five-year visa. This comes from the UK government's belief that China is undermining Hong Kong's rights and freedom. The UK government estimates that 475,000 people from Hong Kong will move into the country in the next few years. That's all for today. You're watching the International News Channel. I am Simone Ivani. Don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to stay up to date on our latest content.